All right, vacation. So I just got back from the sequel sequel of vacation. Um, the the sequel vacation of Chevy Chase's National Lampoon's Summer Vacation. And it wasn't that bad. Uh, from what I, from, from the buzz I heard around the interweb, some reviewers were worried um, about this because they were turning National Lampoon's uh, comedy into a raunchy comedy. But that, that kind of works in this film's favor. Um, as a natural progression of the original series. But this one takes place um, with the son of Chevy Chase's character all grown up. Uh, so Russ has like a family of his own and he wants to take them to Wally World. His wife is played by Christina, Christina Applegate and I'm not sure who plays his two children. I think one of them might be played by the person who plays Lip on Shameless. I'm not sure, but, um, this wasn't that bad of a movie. Like, I can see why people wouldn't like it going in, the comedy's relative and all that, but, uh, there are some, like, just bodily fluid jokes, but there's not, there's not a lot. My only gripe with this movie is that a lot of the trailer, like, the trailer spoiled the entire fucking movie. Like, a lot of the big jokes were given away in the trailer, but there's still quite a few extra, like, really good parts um, that weren't in the trailer, like um, the, the Griswold Springs scene. Yeah, the punchline is they go to the springs, but instead of it being a hot springs, it's actually um, a, a, a septic, like, where they drain all the septic fluid. But there were a few other jokes in that section that were funny, too, like um, the guy who gives them directions there it's like this dirty hitchhiker and he has like a rat on him and he doesn't like notice the rat crawling on him. But it, it wasn't that bad of a movie. My my only gripe with it besides the fact that the trailer kind of spoiled the movie was that the character of the, the character of Russ was very um, sometimes they'd be pulling inspiration more from, like, the father uh, from the original movies, where, like, he was, like, a man's man, like, kind of, like, too, too macho to admit that he was wrong, and kind of not smart all the time, like, kind of dumb and impulsive, but then other times, like, Ed Helms is just a fucking retard in this movie, like, Jesus Christ, there, there's some really questionable things that he does in this movie that just like make no sense but luckily that happens very few like it, it doesn't happen that often in this film most of the humor does come from like just him like wanting his family to bond and uh, like stay together and, and stuff like that that's more like the B plot of the movie and at times it feels forced and other times it doesn't. This movie works best when it's paying homage to the old vacation movies. Like um, one of the best running jokes in the movie is that he get he buys a he rents a car for them and it's like an Albanian um, reindeer or something. Um, it's called like the Albanian reindeer and it just it has like all these odd features like two separate gas tanks and a remote that has like a bunch of different buttons on it that are just symbols that they don't really say what the buttons are for. I really wanted to find out what the swastika button was for god damn it but like one button it has like um, a mushroom on it and it um it makes the car like it reignites the other gas tank and then there's another button that just like makes the windows explode <laughs> like it's it's a really it like when it does stuff like that the movie works but like when the film doesn't work is when he goes to see his sister and she's married to like Chris Hemsworth who like 
uh, Rusty's wife kind of has feelings for too. Like she she thinks he's like really fucking attractive, and then there's like this jealousy thing that kind of comes from it. And it just it the film doesn't quite work there. But like when it's him, his family on the road, and like they're getting into like shenanigans. That's when the film works, and it does inject like this new kind of like raunchy humor into it. And like I said, it hits more than it misses. There's some things where like. Like, the little brother is really fucking psychotic for no reason. Like, if there had been a build-up to him being psychotic, then, like, it would make sense. But, like, there, like he just always makes fun makes fun of his older brother. And then at one, one point in the movie, he, like, puts a plastic bag around his head just to see how long he can go without breathing for. Like, things like that kind of don't work, but, I don't know, they're still funny. It's things like that, like... I'm able, the rest of the movie works well enough that I can, like, just, nah, that's kind of funny, and just be like, okay, it's, it's just a stupid joke. It's, it's not like a, that's the difference I find between a bad comedy and a good comedy. A good comedy, there can be, like, one or two misfires, and you still just like, okay, yeah, that was funny. Well, it's not as good as the rest of the stuff. It's not as cohesive, but it's still pretty funny. Or if it's bad, you're like, uh... This, the movie is nothing but misfires. But this movie this movie works fine. Like, I didn't hate going to go see it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought Ed Helms was fucking hilarious in this movie as Russ Griswold. And I'm, I'm hoping they do a sequel to this movie. The kids the kids were really good, too. Like, the guy, the, the, the guy who plays the... Um, the older brother, like like I said, he reminds me of the one from Shameless. There, he was really good in this, and so like Christine, Christina Applegate was good. I don't really see her in a lot, so I don't have anything to compare her to. But she was good. She had good comedic timing. She she was fun in it. Chevy Chase had a cameo, um, which was good. Um, his his um. The, the wife from the original vacation, the... Uh, she wasn't really in this, which is kind of... Bever Beverly D'Angelo, which is kind of a bummer. Um, Ron Livingston, for some reason, got, like, close to top billing, even though he was only in it for, like, five minutes max. But another place where this movie works really really well is cameos oh my god there's so many like fucking just one-off hilarious fucking cameos in this movie like um spoiler alert um i'm just gonna pause it and spoiler alert for the next eight minutes all right spoiler alert cameos um daryl dixon um, Norman Reedus plays a trucker that you see at, like, the very end of the movie who, the running, like, he appears to be, like, psychotic and, like, hunting the family down. And, like, I was, I was like, okay, that's, that's an interesting joke. It's just not gonna be, like, if he turns out to not be psychotic, that's not gonna be that good of a joke. Like, that good of a punchline. Or... Even if he does, it just it's gonna be a little bit too weird. But no, he turns out to be perfectly har like perfectly nice, and then he returns the lost he returns a wedding ring that um, Ed Helms's wife had lost. But he actually does turn out to be um, a rapist and or child molester. Like I don't know. <laughs> like I just thought that was that was a weird joke that kind of worked and it, like. Just Norman Reedus has like really good comedic timing for that one scene he's in, because the 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 young the younger son um, accused accused the trucker. He's like, oh, on on the on the CB radio. Oh, I heard all truckers are rapists. Is this true? And at the end of the movie, when they meet with him, he just looks at the trucker. He's like, so I guess you aren't a rapist, huh? And Nor the camera just like pans to Norman Reedus's face. He's like, oh, here's the wedding ring back. <laughs> and like like the next scene is just then like he didn't answer the question like what and they ask like oh why is this teddy bear strapped to the front of your truck and he's like children find it the children find it comforting 
<laughs> like it was and then the other cameos were Nick Kroll um Sweet D from Sunny in Philadelphia I'm, I'm slipping on the actress's name Olsen something um the um the Latino I guy from Batman Keegan Michael Keys in, in a scene um and Charlie Day, like, there's a lot of, like, really good cameos in this movie. Like, Keegan-Michael Key plays, like, the, uh, the next-door neighbor who's, like, just, ah, oh, me and my kid, we get along so good, oh, what, what? And for some reason, his wife is played by Brenda from the Scary Movie series, which was fucking weird. I, I haven't seen her in, like, years in anything, but she's still funny. Um, Charlie Day plays, like, the suicidal, um, <laughs> kayak instructor who, um, run, who, uh, runs, like, these, the, these kayaking tours near, um, the Grand Canyon. Um, I don't know, it was Charlie Kelly, basically, like, Day is a good actor, it's just, he basically, that's all he's asked to do now is just, okay, play Charlie Kelly. That's kind of more or less who he's playing in this. He's, he's only on screen for like one one scene with dialogue and the other one is like the family, um, they're ra river rafting and um, the scene is all silent but like music is playing. And like that's the only other scene he's in. He like tries to kill the family and himself by like going over a waterfall but it I don't know he, 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 he had an interesting cameo um the Nick Kroll um Sweet D and two other people they played like state troopers who met at the uh, four at the four uh, points thing where like the four states come together um, they, that was an interesting little scene. It got a little bit stupid at the end. Like, cause they, they basically, instead of arresting the people who were fucking at the four state section, they just, like, started getting into a fight with each other about, like, the different shittiness, shittiness of each other's states. Like, I didn't, I don't, th I thought that those were interesting cameos. All in all, it was a really good movie, though, like. Final thoughts? Uh, you know what you're getting into with the trailer. Like, the if you don't think that this is going to be a funny film for you from the trailer, like the Red Band trailer with, like, the cursing and the stuff, you're not going to you're not gonna enjoy the movie because that's basically what you're getting. You're not getting anything more or anything less. It's not like a Judd Apatow film where, like, um on the abrasive outside there's like some kind of hidden meaning nah it's 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 exactly what you see and you, what you're getting it wasn't that bad though it was it was really good i'd suggest if you're interested in checking it out if you know what you're if you know it's what you like then um yeah go see it or go see it on on cheap seats if, if not then if you're just like vaguely interested in it just watch it on netflix then because it's not it's good. It's 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 good for what it is. It's good for like a raunchy revival of the um, vacation franchise, and I'm hoping they could maybe do that with some more National Lampoon movies. I don't I don't know. Like maybe they could reboot Naked Gun or something like that. I don't know. But or. I thought National Lampoon was Naked Gun, but I don't, can't remember. But I don't know. It, it was it was good. So trailers. Oh, just the side note. Um, if you've seen the trailer, you see like one of the gags is like Chris Hemsworth goes into like the room and shows off like his ginormous package, and I'm just thinking that reminds me of like Boogie Nights, where it's is is that. It's not actually Mark Wahlberg's penis at the end of Boogie Nights, but like, I'm just I'm just wondering, just like morbid curiosity, like Chris Hemsworth.
Because Mar cause Mark Wahlberg always hated that people saw that in Boogie Nights. He's like, oh, when people actually get with me, they're going to be disappointed. So I'm just wondering if Chris Hemsworth is, thinks that too. I have to check that in the interviews and see if he says anything about that because that would be fucking funny. Uh, but, alright. Trailers. Trailers, trailers, trailers. What trailers did we get? I have them written down my phone somewhere. Okay. Mastermind. Um, I've seen this trailer before online. I don't know if I've actually seen it with a movie yet. But, um, I heard it's based on a true story. Um, Zach Galifianakis and Kirsten Wig and a bunch of people, they rob a bank and then there's double crossing and... I don't know, it could be good. I just, I don't like Galifianakis if he's the, um, the main character. I feel he's better as, um, the side character, where someone plays the straight man to him. It looks like Kirsten Wiig is playing the straight character, which doesn't make sense, but... I don't know. It could be good. There's a there's a few good jokes in in the trailer. I just I don't know. The chemistry of it seems like really really weird. Um, Scout's Guide to Zombies. Um, Brad and them got this in their video, and they said all they got was like these stupid little vignettes. And yeah, I guess that's the marketing they're doing for the stupid movie, where it's not a trailer. It's just like quick little scenes from the trailer where quick little scenes like um a viral campaign um i got the wildlife badge and the um readiness badge so like the one of them they're getting condoms in like a store and the other one is it's zombie cats um i have no fucking clue like when this trailer came like when this video came on in the theater, I, audi I very audibly said, what the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? Like, I don't know. I have to see an actual trailer. I know I've been bitching the trailers give away too much, but this is nothing. Like, how hard is it to make a legit fucking trailer for a movie? You don't show plot points, major plot points, you just show a brief synopsis of what the introduction to the story is. That's a, that's how a trailer works. That's how a trailer works. You don't, like, give away the main spoiler of the film, and you don't show all the... You don't show a quick, brief summary of the entire movie. You just show enough that a normal person can deduce this is what the movie is about. Okay, I think this is good. Not everything in the movie and not a scene that doesn't really explain what the fuck it's about. Now, I'm assuming because it's called a uh, Scout's Guide, there's scouts and there's a zombie apocalypse. I'm just wondering what the... Like, is it a Goonies kind of movie where they're like kids and like this is an isolate thing or is this like a worldwide thing? Is it like Zombieland where it's kind of like a dark comedy or is it like a kids kind of film. I'm not really sure. Well, PG-13, like, kids comedy, like a 90s kids comedy, where there was, like, some sexual jokes, but it wasn't, like, too extreme. Just, I don't know. Um, American Ultra. Uh, this is Jesse Eisenberg, uh, stoner, uh, Jason Bourne movie. Um, I'm actually kind of pumped to see that. If I can stand Kirsten Stewart, I think it'll be a really fucking good movie. If I can stand fucking Mouth Breather, it'll be a really good movie, I think. Like, I like Jesse Eisenberg. He's a, he's a fun actor, and, and him and Kirsten, Kirsten Stewart, Kirsten, him and Kirsten Stewart were good in, um, Adventureland. So, like, you know, this should be... Should be this this I'm hoping this will be a really good movie. And it looks like it's a hard R too, so <laughs> I like hard R action films. Like we don't need to neuter our action films for little babies. Um Point Break. 
when this was on, this was another trailer that I just audi audibly, very audibly said, what the fuck? Because it was like, the opening is like, oh, I think these people that are robbing these, these things are extreme sports people. I need to go infiltrate them. I was like, what the fuck is this? Is this like triple X or something? Or did I travel back to like 2000 where extreme was awesome and we had to put in movies? No, it's, it's point break. And I didn't see the first point break. I know it's like a must see in any action repertoire, but, and I have no doubt it's a good movie. It's, it's on my list of things to watch, but this movie looks like a piece of shit. Like, wow, every single cop and action cliche possible in this fucking god-awful piece of filth trailer. Um, just, no. And finally, um, We Are Your Friends. White Privilege the movie, I guess? Um, this, this trailer was the main trailer that pissed me off the most tonight. Like, it's a bunch of, like, hipster douchebags. Um, DJing in, like, L.A. Looks like they're living a pretty fucking good life. And they're like, oh, we're not gonna get out of L.A. Mer, 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 mer. And then the trailer is, like, just nothing but fucking cliches. Like, you betrayed me. You have to chase your dream. You have to do this and that. And, like, oh, we're gonna rule this town. We're not gonna get out of here. And there's, like, beats and all this stuff. Stupid fucking shit. It's, um, st stupid, stupid shit. It's just pandering to the lowest common denominator of our fucking youth that think, like, beats and dreads and parties are fucking awesome. Just really fucking stupid. I don't know. Like, if they were fucking poor kids that didn't look like they lived in fucking Beverly Hills then maybe this movie would be kind of interesting, but it would still feel like it's just doing the same old, like, rags to riches fucking music story again. Which I don't fucking care for, and I don't need to fucking see. It's just fucking bullshit. This trailer's fucking bullshit. And, like, uh, I'll go see the movie just to, like, fucking rage at it and just be like, why does this fucking piece of shit exist? There's no need for this. We can be better. We can make better movies. Vacation isn't a fucking masterpiece, but like, at least it's better than... At least it's better than Pixels and most of the comedy sequels I've seen, so at least someone's toeing the line a little bit. So, tomorrow night, um, Mission Impossible, Rogue Nations. So, yes, really excited for that. I hear good things about that film. Hopefully it does not suck. If you like this video, like it, uh, comment if you want me to check out anything. And I will see you guys next time on Off the Top.